Welcome to our second lab. So in this lab, uh, we are going to create an AWS RDS instance. Uh, specifically, we will use this Aurora instance on uh, AWS. And we also will try some very simple SQL code so that we can create tables and we can make queries. Uh, so once we are in our AWS Educate account and select our classroom, so go to the console of the for this class, uh, we can see we still have $50 uh, credits remain. That's great. And uh, let's open AWS console. Uh, so this time, uh, we are going to use the RDS. So let's type RDS and this one the first one rds okay so the interface just changed a little bit on aws console so right now we should have no rds instances db instances so let's just go ahead uh, to create one okay uh, so here you can choose different endpoint so you can use aurora amazon aurora or you can use mysql postgresql it centers. Uh, so let's use the standard create. Let's choose keep the Aurora. And um, personally, I like post GR circle. So let's use post GR circle. And there are two types of the capacity provision and also serverless. So serverless means that you don't need to worry about a number of the instances. So they will fix that for you. And for the serverless, you can also run those editors online so that you don't need to download those uh, Python editors uh, into your local computer. Unfortunately, right now, AWS Educator does not support serverless. So we have to use the provisioned, okay? So that means we need to install a, um, a Python SQL editor later, so to our local computer. So let's keep the provisioned. Uh, you can choose a version. So um, <coughs> you can see that they, they support the uh, up to 11.9. So let's keep everything as default. So let's use 11.7. The templates, let's choose develop and a test. OK, develop and a test. Um, the database cluster identifier, so I'm not going to change that one. So believe because that is the only one that I'm going to create. So just use that as default. Username, so since we're using um, the AWS PostG circle um, version, so by default, the master username is PostGRES. So let's also keep that one as default. Uh, next is a password. So let's use the same password. I know this is not the best practice, but uh, just allow me to later to check your, your database. So let's use the same password. So the password is on the lab instructions. So like it is CISE480LAB2. OK, so that's a cost number, size 480, and also lab 2. OK, so that is the password. So let's use the same password. Again, you should not <laughs> tell the other one that the password. But for this lab, let's use the same password so that I can access your, your deep instance and I can check your work. The instance type, so depending on the instance type, you can choose uh, different classes and you can choose the instance. Uh, so if, for example, in the production scenario, so you can choose a, a powerful uh, instance. So let's just let's also keep that as a uh, as default. Uh, do we want to create uh, Aurora replicas or reader node? So let's say yes. OK, let's say yes. So we do want to see the feature of the replica or the reader node. And also remember that that will also cost the more credits. OK, so because we are deploying more than one instance. VPC, so let's use the default VPC and also um, uh, let's use the uh, 
default security group looks right now uh, we cannot change the security group unless we create a new VPC so let's just use a default VPC oh sorry the subnet group so let's use a default subnet group sorry not a security group security group is here we can change that so let's use the default subnet group <clears throat> Uh, for the public access, let's choose yes, okay, because we need to connect to our own uh, Python ed uh, SQL editor, so let's choose yes, and also be cautious here, so normally, so in a real production, you may choose no, so that you want to keep your uh, RDS instance to be private, in this case, let's choose yes, uh, let's create a new security group. Remember, the security group is something like the firewalls. Let's call it DB uh, security group. OK, database security group. Additional, so the default port for post GRE circle is this one. So 5432, so let's keep that one. And authentication, let's choose password authentication. Additional configurations, so let's keep everything as default. Okay, you can see you can choose how long do you want to have backups, encryptions, uh, etc. Okay, so let's keep everything as default and let's hit create. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so when that is being created, so we will be directed to a, a new page that we will check. We will see the status of the uh, of the database. So here you can see we do have a cluster. So that is Aurora database with the engine of post Jerry circle, and we are using a region which is Northern Virginia. U.S. East one is Northern Virginia. So that is a region. In that region, uh, we have two instances, okay? And you can see by default, AWS deployed those one into two AZ zones. One is in AZD and another one is AZA. And both are readers, so, but later on, when the instance are ready, one will become the writer, that is a primary, one will be the reader. And you can see the um, we are using the same VPC and they are in the different AZs. So if you check this instance and you will see the endpoint, okay, that is not being created. So you can see this one is for writer, so that is the primary one, and this one is for reader, so that is the secondary secondary one. And the others, you can share this one with other AWS account actually, but for educators account, we cannot do that. We can also monitor the status, okay, like CPU usage, DB connections later. Right now, it is empty because it is still being created. Uh, logs, uh, configurations, and maintenance and the backups. So right now we don't have any backups and also tags. So we didn't define any tags. All right, so let's go back to the configuration. And here, um, we are oh, not configuration. So let's go back to the connectivities. And you can see this is still being created. So let's just wait because it has been creating. Uh, so in the meantime, so you can go to the this website that is pgadmin.org to download and also install this pgadmin so that is the sql sql editor uh, as said i hope hopefully we can do everything in the cloud uh, unfortunately for this lab uh, you do need to install download and also install this pgadmin so that is a um, uh, local SQL editor. The reason is because uh, on AWS, our educate account cannot use that service. 
so we have to install the the SQL editor in our local environment. So let's go to download. And depending on your um, environment, so if you're using um, uh, Windows, you can use the Windows. And if you're using the uh, Mac computer, you can use a Mac. Okay, so I'm using Windows, so I go to Windows. And I can just download the latest one, so you can just hit click. Okay, so that will download, uh, and also depending on the system, so I'm using this one, uh, 62 byte, so I just download this. Okay, uh, so when the download is finished, you can just hit the install. Okay, open it. So that is the interface. You can just hit next, 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 and uh, to finish the installation. And it is similar on uh, on Mac computer, but I don't have a Mac, so uh, I'm not going to demo for Mac part. And also because I have already installed PG Admin, so I'm going to cancel that actually. Yes. So to to start, uh, you can just uh, search, and you can search PG Admin. And if you click PG Admin, and so that will open a browser. So it's a, it's pretty interesting because it is a browser-based uh, Python editor, and uh, they may ask you to set up the master password. So uh, it's just for security purposes. So you can set up a, a master password. So I'm going to use my, and I just set a pa master password that I know. And do not share this one with others. Uh, if you if you are not sure about that one, you can just simply reset that one. So that's not a big deal. And hit OK. So now you can see uh, I don't have any servers. So this is in my local computer. So if you don't have that, if you don't see that, that's fine. So late on, so when our uh, Aurora instance are ready, so we will add server to here. Okay, uh, so let's go back to check our Aurora instance. So uh, let's refresh it. Okay, uh, looks like you see the first one now become the writer instance. So that's the primary one that is available and um, which is in this uh, US East one region and so in the AZ zone that is in the DAZ zone that is available. Uh, so the reader is still not available yet. All right. And if we click on this writer instance, now you can see that this is endpoint and also you should not share this one with other person. And that is in this AZ zone and also in this VPC. And you can see the subnet that is in this default VPC subnet group. And here we can see the security group. So remember, we call it DB and score SG, so database security. And it is public available. OK, so just as we did on the website uh, lab. So let's click the security group. And let's go to the uh, here and also let's go to the inbound rules. And we can see here uh, the inbound rules is for PostJ circle. That is, we open the pod, that is default pod for, post, for the post GRC SQL. However, we only allow this IP address. So this IP address is my IP address. So let's edit this inbound rules. Let's open that one to every anywhere. OK, create a new security and also allow anywhere. Uh, this is not the best practice, but for this lab, let's just open it to anywhere and save the rules. OK, so that has been changed. Um, now let's go back to our RDS. So RDS.
and see now we have two instances and also one cluster and now if we click this writer so that security group should be updated okay um, and also the reader is being creating so while this reader is being creating so let's just connect to the writer first so let's create connect to the writer first so the end point is this one okay so let's copy this end point that is also the URL host okay let's copy that one and let's go to our PG admin remember copy that host URL now let's right click the servers let's say we want to create a server for the name let's call it db underscore write okay so because now we are accessing to the right server and go to the connections here we paste the host url okay for the writer you can see the port is by default that's right maintain database that's right username that's right password remember we we set password that is size 480 lab 2 okay i'm going to delete this instance right after i record this video okay and let's save it and let's try to connect okay that is connected cool and you can see that is pg uh, database actually we have two databases. this database is for admin we cannot access that one uh, so now we have a server we have a database post js database and we have schemas so we have a public schema in this schema we have zero tables we have zero views okay we have zero tables and we have zero views let's create our first table uh, so let's go to tools and let's open the query tools okay so this is where we can type those sql code okay so this is where we can type the sql code so for this lab we are going to create um, a student table okay remember now we are accessing this db writer so the code is provided here so you can find out the code uh, in this lab instructions so first we are going to create a student table in this public schema uh, where we are going to use where create a student id student name major and also year okay for the name and also major uh, the character the date type is character varying and also we are using student id as a primary key so let's copy this one and let's paste here okay and let's write so that will create a student table okay you can say that was success so now if we refresh this table we do have a student student table being created uh, if we check to view this table you can choose a view and you can see that this table is empty because we just created the table so we haven't inserted any records yet okay so now let's insert some records so here you can see we are going to insert uh, five student records so let's copy that and go back to this editor and now let's copy and paste those new SQL code so here we're using five SQL statements sets five separate uh, SQL statements so we are going to insert into this student table public dot student so for each columns we insert those values so student one id is one s1 in the major of gs the year is 2020 the second student is in i major 2020 uh, third student cs major 2019 and also we have the other two gs student okay so let's try to run that and you can see that is success so now if we go to the view of this student so you can see select everything from student let's write so now you can see now we just inserted all those those five records into our table that is pretty cool 
Okay, so that is we just create a table, created a table, and also inserted uh, several records into this right right instance. Now let's see whether or not our reader instance is ready or not. Uh, let's refresh it. Okay, great. Uh, the reader is also ready. Uh, so let's look at this, uh, go to the monitoring. And you can see that for the writer and also reader, okay, so there's something changed. So both CPU utilization just went up. And there was, a, I don't know why three actions, connections. Um, that's probably because I opened a three window. So to the, to the writer instance, you can see we just had some write IPOs on the write instance. OK, so uh, in a few seconds, we should also ex we should expect that the data will also be synchronized to the reader instance. OK, uh, so now let's connect to the reader instance. <coughs> so go to connectivity. Remember, this is the reader. So let's copy this URL, the, the endpoint. OK, so let's. Uh, add a new server. This one we call it DB read. And the connections, so let's copy and paste this URL. Again, you should not share this one with other person. And the password, size 480 lab 2, which you should not share with other person. Okay, let's save it. <clears throat> And hopefully, OK, it is connected. Let's open the database. You can see we have same database. In the schema, we have one schema that is public. OK, great. Now you can see the CDN table is, is here. OK, so that means the data has already been synchronized to our reader instance. So let's view the data. So see if we have the data. That's cool. You see here we do have uh, the the same data as in the right instance. OK, and let's do some queries. So let's open the other. Uh, remove the other panel. OK, uh, let's also disconnect. Uh, this writer instance. So we want to make sure that we are working on the reader instance. OK, you can see the write has been disconnected. Uh, let's also open the query tool. Table, query tool. So now we will be working with this reader instance. OK, reader instance. Uh, so let's make some queries. So the SQL code is also provided online. So let's say first, let's say we want to select everything from this student table. OK, so copy that and run this query. So this will retain everything from the student table in this reader instance. OK, so now we just return those queries. You can see the same exact result. And next, let's just want to see the student name and also year, and also we want to sort by the year. OK, so this will be a little bit complicated. So let's say we want to select. We, are, we only want to see a student name and also student year. And we also want to sort by the student year in this ascending order. So let's run it. So now you can see we just have a student name and also year of the student being enrolled. And also you can see the year has been ordered in this ascending order. OK, <clears throat> let's try another one. So let's say we want to filter the data. So OK, so let's just first run the first one, the first two lines. So we just want to select major name and also year where student major equals GS. So in this case, you can see we only have uh, the GS students being selected. 
And now if we see we sort by the year, let's see what will happen. OK, so now you can see the student name are sorted by the year that they got enrolled. And for instance, we just want a first record, so we can use a limit. Limit one. OK, so now we have only the GS students that uh, so that that is the first enrolled GS student. OK, so that's pretty cool. Let's try another one. So let's say we want to count the number of students being enrolled. OK, so let's copy that. So here we are using this aggregation function. Uh, so let's first remove this where clause. So let's see how many students being enrolled from this student table. So now you can see we have five students. OK, remember we have we have one in I, one in CS, three in GS. So we have five students and then you can see we see count student IDs. So we have five student IDs and output will be the number in row. So that number of in row. So what if we just want to count based for the GS majors? OK, so now let's run it. You can say, OK, great. Now we have three students in GS major. So by applying this uh, where a clause. OK, so that is use a count function. So what if we want group the data so that we want to see that how many students enrolled in each major? OK, in, so here we can use a group function. We see we select major followed by the count that is a number of students being enrolled from this student table. And in this time, we are using this group by. So we want to group by the student student major. And now if we run it, we get, OK, so the number of the student enrolled in each single major. So we can see we have three in GS, one in CS, one in I. OK, so that is a, some very simple queries. So now you can see we insert data into the right instance. And we can read data from this reader instance and also from this write instance. So we can read from both instances. So the multiple instances, the reader instances, just in case you have too many users that want to make queries at the same time. So you can deploy those many read instances to, to meet your demand. All right. So, um, so let's, if you no longer want to use those PG admins after this class, you can remove those servers. Okay, and you can simply close this one. Okay, so now let's go back to our instance, AWS. So now we have a cluster, we have one reader, one writer, and also we have one reader. If we go to the monitoring, you can see here, because we just had some queries um, on the reader, so you can see now the reader have higher CPU utilization, and you can see the DB connections just went up. And now you can see we have some write IPOS on, on, the, on the reader instance. OK, and also we have some more queries on the on the reader. So if you want to add more reader instances, you can go to actions. You can, so you can add the regions if you like. So right now we are in the North Virginia. So if you want to deploy to multiple regions, you can. Uh, you can also add more readers. OK, so if you like, you can also add more readers. And for each single instance, or you can reboot, you can delete, and or you can just give a very quick uh, fail over so that if you want to run a test, okay. So you can do a, a very quick fail over, etc. And finally, so once you're done with this class, at least let's say if once you have received your grid for this lab, don't forget to delete this instance because you don't want to waste your credits. So to delete the instances, to delete the cluster, you have to delete those instances one by one. So let's see. Let's first select the reader instance and delete. 
and delete me and let's delete the, the right you can see now the reader is been deleting and we don't want to create a snapshot okay and delete so when all the instances are being deleted uh, the the cluster will also be deleted okay uh, so if you refresh this page they used to have a refresh button here. <clears throat> okay, so now you can see this one is being deleted. Okay, so in a few seconds, all your cluster will be deleted. All right, so that's for this lab. Uh, for submissions, I should show this one late, earlier. So for submissions, I want uh, the endpoint of your reader instance, okay. Uh, make sure you delete your your cluster after I give you grid, okay. Make sure you delete that after I give you grid. 